pretty incredible experience actually like it's something that you can't really experience anywhere else I mean you're in the gate and you know that everybody down there is watching you and you kind of you try not to think about it but sometimes pop in your head just everybody and everything that it's taken to get to where you are I just try to focus on the present moment and think about my run that's it not what's gonna happen after uh, when I finish my run about my scores you're competing against everyone that's around you so it's it's kind of no, you're so nervous looking at everyone else and how they're preparing for it and it's it's tough to kind of focus on what you have to do and then you get there and, and you're standing at the top of the course and you're about to go down and, and they're saying oh judges are ready you know like you, you're about to go and, and you kind of just have to let it go Standing there and know that it's just going to be you, the snow, and the best you can do about it, that's a, that's a great feeling. I don't even look at the course before I go. Like, I'm just looking out, zoning completely, uh, and then I hear the starter countdown, and that's why I focus in on, that's my run, and uh, it's game time, really. When I'm in the gate, just take a few deep breaths and say, remember why I love the sport, and just remember why I started skiing moguls and reflect back on the moments that I first fell in love with the sport. It's super intense. It is super stressful for me. It's super intense, but I love it. You know, and the day that I don't get goosebumps anymore when uh, you know when it's contest day and my guys are in the gate is probably the day that I should should pack it in and quit coaching. I push in when they call my name and I'm standing there and my hands go numb and if I'm real nervous my teeth or my stomach will go numb. I just look out in front of me and I usually can't really hold back a smile. Like even if I'm scared or if I'm nervous, it's it's a it's like this weird mixture of adrenaline and nervousness and fear that I seem to just really enjoy. Yeah, when I'm in the gate, I feel like I'm in the zone, everything's slow-mo, I just I have one thing to focus about and it's my run, there's nothing else in my mind. You feel like you're at the top of the world and it's a great feeling. I, I never really liked the park that much and like I didn't want to be a racer either and kind of mobile skiing was like the answer. And then my brother started skiing mogul since he's four years older and I was just seeing him come back home and he was just so happy. At one point, it's just my time to get in, my mom and dad were just couldn't stop me, couldn't hold on me anymore. I, I wanted to ski with my brother, I wanted to compete in Mogul. My dad was a professional mogul skier. He took me to a pro mogul tour competition when I was like four. And I thought it was sweet, and then I guess he just signed me up when I was five. And I fell in love with it since then. When I started it was... Uh, still sort of spontaneous or pseudo spontaneous air. There was uh, guys would kind of pick their air bumps and they would sculpt them a little bit with their skis. But uh, it was, you know, you're jumping in the mogul still. One thing people don't realize is that when you were competing in uh, moguls back then, you were trying to figure out where you were going to land. You know, so if you were trying to, you're trying to figure out, are you going to land? You know, well, you wanted to land on top of the mogul or on the back side of the mogul. The moguls weren't also always cryptid. You know, they were kind of not necessarily made by cap. So you could go to a place where the moguls were really, really big for like a couple sections and then really small. So you you always had to adapt to it. On a tough course when I was a kid, a 360 was a pretty big deal. So to go from that to now where guys are doing, you know, the off-axis 1080s and double fulls and 
on tough courses, it's uh, yeah, the acrobatic side has been has been crazy. That stuff was really cool. That was the way that the sport was born. I have a ton of respect for that that era. Um, but we're, we're somewhere else now. They couldn't stay there forever. There was the progression was gonna have to take us somewhere new. There's three aspects, there's skiing, jumping, and time. So the key is to put the tree together and try to uh, balance everything. If you try to do really difficult jump, but then it made you uh, screw up your landing or something like that, or ski, ski slower just to make sure you have your jump, it's not good, you have to, it's really like a balance sport. This is Alexander Bilodeau, two-time Olympic gold medalist competing at the last competition of his career, Senior Nationals at Apex Mountain in BC. Now let's start this over. Alex's top air is a back double full, a backflip with two full rotations, worth 1.490 for its degree of difficulty. As you can see, there's not much that could be done better here, so both jump judges awarded him with the maximum multiplier score of 2.5 for execution. As Alex enters the middle section, you can see a couple of small mistakes when his knees come apart, but he then gains his composure and stays nearly flawless the rest of the way to the second jump. The turn judges award him with a 4.2, 4.5, 4.7, 4.6, and 4.4, all out of a possible 5.0, with the highest and lowest scores being removed, giving him a total turn score of 13.4 out of a maximum 15.0. Turns are worth 50% of the total score. Now Alex takes off the bottom jump, performing a cork 720 cross. Two off-axis rotations with the skis crossed over each other, worth 1.240. This jump was executed very well, but not quite as perfect as his back double fall. So both judges award him with a 2.4 for execution. His top air and bottom air add up to a total jump score of 6.69 out of a maximum 7.5. Jumps are worth 25% of the total score. The last scoring component of a mogul run is speed. This course is 220 meters long. Alex made it down in 21.95 seconds, meaning he skied just over 10 meters per second. The pace time on this course was 22.68 seconds. Pace is calculated by dividing the course length by 9.7, as the top skiers are expected to ski 9.7 meters per second. This gave Alex a time score of 6.38 out of 7.5, which make up the final 25% of his score. Alex's turn scores, air scores, and speed score add up to a total of 26.57. Good enough for yet another gold medal. The best year has the whole package, right? They got, they got the jumps, the speed, and the turns. And if once you figure that all out, which takes years, lots of training, that'll be the, the world champ right there if you have it all. But most people, they have one of the three. I mean, you never see a perfect mogul runner, and I think that's very charming. Like, in most other sports, you can see it like something being perfectly made, but a mogul runner can, can never be perfect, can always be better. If you just take the jump, there's so many parts of that, going into the jump, going up in the air, how you perform in the air, going down to the landing, and, and there's, it's so hard just to hit a mogul jump in the right way, and people have no idea how hard that is, because they never tried it. And then coming back into the moguls, it's, uh, it's really, it's really hard. <laughs> Mogul skiing and all the freestyle discipline are pretty young in the, the historical uh, situation if we compare it to other sports like soccer and a bigger sport around the world. Uh, which means in the last decade we've had plenty of big change. Speed has been turning, everyone turned on the switch in the past 10 years. I mean, it's, like we're skiing 10, 10 meters sec per second. I mean, it's, it's, it's nuts. It's, going fast. The jumping has been the other big, big, big change in our sport. 
uh, especially because of the, all the water ramping and all the nice site preparation and uh, it's we've just had a great opportunity to work on like flipping and all those kind of stuff and working on snow and in water. The progression, I mean, we moved from no inverts right towards having inverts and that completely changed the game, obviously. I mean, pretty much everyone does two inverts in their run, um, an off-axis spin and, off and an inverted flip. So that's been a huge game changer for the sport. I think it's made it a lot more relevant. You're coming in and your transitions, you know, within a, it's a very small transition. And the other thing is the jump length. I mean, a mogul jump is pretty small and the, the lower band of the technical specifications for mogul jumps are quite small. So it's a very quick takeoff. Women are all are progressing. You're seeing a ton of like back bowls and cork sevens. It's becoming way more common. It's basically all physics, the sport, but I believe it's more of an art than anything else. It's the art of how your body reacts to all of it. There's not one mogul course that is going to be the same. You always have to adjust your speed, how, how the angle of your body is going to work with the moguls. You always have to uh, accelerate there and decelerate there to make sure you hit the jump or make sure you stay alive till the bottom of the course. So I think being in all those different situations really makes that difference to be a good skier all around. the most frustrating thing is you do you do everything right you do all you can and just one little thing can blow it all for you yeah there's like just so many technical aspects to the sport like there's just so many tiny little things that make like huge differences and you gotta you gotta have all of them otherwise just one little thing can make like the difference between making a final and not making a final The sports changed a lot for sure. When I, I started, I, there were no flips, and I was too young to flip anyway. And I was kind of in a good timing with my age because the sports changed when I was young with the flips. So I had the time like to go to the water ramp and, and work and work and work and do a lot of trampoline. 18 years old, if you like never flip of your, in your life, it's harder than if you start at 11 to do some backflip and, and quirks and everything. Maybe that's why I'm. I'm consistent skier because uh, I'm not in competition. I never put myself in a run that like I'm going, okay, this one I'm going at 110%. Like in training, I try to make the run that I know that it's going to be on top and I make it so it's easy in my head. And when I do it, like one chance, I'm like, I don't know, 20, like 19. 
old guy on 19 times. Being a World Cup champion is a dream coming true to have the, the big two globe at home. I think I, I've done it young and I'm happy of, of all the work and everything pay off. Ooh yeah! chess it's you know it's it's a we put our our bodies on the line out there um, you're gonna fall it, that's the whole part of it injury is a huge part of the sport oh my god Holy. yeah mongol skiing has been Terrible for my body. Uh, I'm 24 and I feel like I'm 50, but I enjoy it so much. I mean, I'll worry about that when I'm retired. Injuries suck. That's what I want to say first. I ended up having impingement in both my hip joints, which is really painful, and um, it's hard to it's hard to even walk sometimes. Oh my God. <laughs> Everyone has their share of injuries in the sport and I've been fortunate enough that um, I haven't had anything too major happen to me but I've had a lot of very chronic kind of injuries, chronic issues both with my back and with my knees. As much as it's frustrating and it doesn't seem like it's getting better, it's never a question of if, it's always it's just a question of when I'm going to finally get better and be able to compete at 100%. The public definitely sees it as so dangerous. I have so many people being like, oh, how are your knees, how are your back? But I think with our training, because of water ramps and dryland training, like our bodies are ready for what we're doing. We prepare all season to be able to take the hits that we do and be able to make it down the course. It's important to have a strong muscle that can support your body and support the speed that you go at, the jumps that you do and everything else. I see a lot of people when they think about going to the gym, they equate it with, you know, getting big, getting bulky, putting on muscle, getting huge. But um, for us, when we go to the gym, it's generally about getting strong, staying light, being powerful. Uh, the goal for our body composition is to be light and quick, but also strong. Um, but without without that bulk, so we, uh, we try to stay away from that with a lot of power exercises, a ton of core work. Um, and a lot of core stability, stuff like that. None of those, uh, none of those bulky exercises. As I grow and as I get stronger and as I look at the course a little bit differently, the way I react to the course is going to change. There's no picking your style. You'll see everyone coming down the course and they look completely different. And not because they want to. Everyone kind of has this image and it's pretty similar to the perfect mogul run. But you're never going to get there because the sport is such a challenge and that's why I think it's cool how everyone looks their own way.
sure everyone has their unique style. Like, if you're if you're a mogul skier, you can, you can usually pick out someone within like two seconds of the run, like who that is. You just know who exactly who it is by their style. And I think I don't know, just because it's there's so many little things, and everyone has to go about it different. That everyone's gonna look different doing it, even though you're doing the same thing. Dylan Walsh act really tall, pretty skinny, so he is like really upright stance. Um, whereas Pat Deneen, he's a tank, he's super, he's heavy, he's kind of shorter, and he just kind of trucks in the mobiles. It's almost like someone's someone's like handwriting, like you're, like you're all gonna be taught the like same way basically, but you're always gonna have a little bit of like a spin off and just have something more like more like, more like creative and stuff. If you go by your feeling when you know it. It's just like we practice a lot hard and with some technique. But at the end of the day, when you compete and a few people you just have fun, it just style. it goes on your feeling. It just yeah. you let your feeling go. I think it's a lot of it is how a certain person deals with the mistakes they make. And like in a mogul run, it's it's all about correcting yourself. No one has a perfect mogul run, no matter how perfect it looks. There's always tiny little mistakes that you have to react to to get yourself right back. And uh, I think that really defines a mogul skier. I think there are a lot of various styles of mogul skiing for sure, and a lot of that has to do with what you grew up with. I think. You look at, I mean, there's definitely a big difference in style between the west and the east. And out here, we grow up with deep bumps, lots of snow, totally different mobile courses, really. From the east, where it's small bumps, icier, harder. Just go on with your vibe. It's just follow, follow what your instinct is, and it's a matter of finding what your path is and evolving in, into that path and follow, follow what your capacity are. Where you have to hit the mogul, like everyone sees it differently, like where you have to turn. So it all makes us like really different, like even though we're doing the same line or same jump. Or, yeah. I like to think about just what I have to do to have a good run and a good high scoring run and that will kind of develop my style as I go. When I was an athlete, I was in my own sort of world, in my own bubble. That's what I was taught to do. So I was always taught to work hard and um, be the best that I could be. But I never, I never knew what the best I could be really was, or what the best, you know, is. I wasn't mature enough through my whole, you know, eight years on the national team. I learned the most about myself the minute I started coaching and I got to step outside that bubble and and I just opened my mind to a wealth of information. So just about getting your hip over top of the left side and that's what it takes to plan. I've experienced a lot more success as a coach than I, than I ever did as an athlete. So, uh, you know, the feeling is, uh, I think, just as good, I get you know, it, so much gratification from, from watching my guys uh, get on the podium and uh, or just improve, you know, the day-to-day -day improvement. You can't land, make one turn, and then go, yeah, same. Stand up, put your hands out, take the box, and then put the box. Exactly what? Yeah. 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 The feeling of getting down the mogul run or and then like having that sense of accomplishment or 
I think I, no, I, I really enjoy it. Like yeah, also because when I see somebody doing a great run, and I know that part of that. That's me. <laughs> I'm like thinking, you know, that was me. <laughs> you know, I made that happen. Um, which, you know, I'm like, okay, it's the guy, but I mean, you know, I, I had a, a, pl a part in it. And it, when you're somebody's, you know, part of somebody's success, I think it's always a great feeling. We don't fight, like, we grow up together, so it's like not in our nature to come be against each other because we always had such a good relationship, like as sister, before then competitor. We push ourselves, like if I see my sister doing a 360 on a jump that I'm scared, of course I'm gonna try to do it. But it's not a bad competition, it's just fun and yeah, it's just help each other to get in better. Every day I want to learn something on the AL, I want to see how I improve and notice the difference. So yeah, there's definitely like concept of pushing my limits. I want to go, I want to know how far I can go. There are small goals and bigger goals and the fun part of it is to see how I evolve and how I improve. J.F. Kusan tried to introduce grabs and judges weren't sure about judging it. And then Mike Kennechuk, I remember back in like two, three years ago, even four years ago, he was doing like Cork 7 youth that were so nice and I don't know, some other grabs. I guess it's gone through it through generations because me and some other guys on our team are starting to doing some do some tricks with grabs and I think people will start to like that with new, uh, new styles. For grabs, it's it's more of, it's not rewarded like it should be. Because um, the skill level of all these gears, everybody could do it if they wanted to. They could grab everything. Um, but it's just not, it's not rewarded. So I, I see if we don't change it, then, then it will become a game of who has, you know, the most spins in this one flip up top. And, you know, who has really the same thing on the bottom with their cork 10s where they get you know cork 14 down or whatever but it's who can you know wrap it up the the hardest in the the 50 meter landing that we have well i don't think that's not very progressive i believe your grabs should get more credit and it shouldn't be just a big j or a small one it should be a different letter for every trick you do, every grab you do, everything. Like a flat spin shouldn't be just a off axis trick, it should be a flat spin. I mean, the, the sport has improved a lot from the last few years, and it's very different. They need to adjust, adjust uh, their judging, and uh, I think the younger people can, uh, we're, we're, we're more like, uh, kind of into the, the new, uh, the, the improvement of the sport, or the, the, the big change. What do you want to keep the sport more traditional? Well, how long can you really do that for, right? So when, when we're at a state, like maybe, maybe not right now, but we're heading down the road where they're all going to be so similar. Why can't, why don't, why don't we change it a bit and push it? The next generation is definitely, they're uh, trying to live up to like almost the Olympic standard right now. So um, they're, they're stepping up their game big time from the kids I see. Like when I was, the kids I coached when I was their age, I was just doing like doubles and triples on mogul jumps. They're doing like backflips and corks now. So it's, it, they've definitely 
change the game around big time. I'm young still and I have a bunch of years to make my goals and stuff so it's not that big of a deal if I mess up one run because it'll just be a learning experience for the next competition. I'm in this sport because I like it. It's not because someone's telling me that I have to do it or so every day of mogul skiing is better than a day at school or a day working or anything else. So. You know, you look up to so many people when you're skiing because, you know, it's kind of setting the bar higher because you always want to improve because you always want to be like the particular person skiing since you are the youngest one. So you look up to the older people and you're trying to be like them. So. Kids don't have any fear, so when they look up to the older people, they're, they want to be like them, so they're going to go and try new things all the time and look and do those things, and so they're going to improve way faster. I've seen a lot from the younger kids and I have the opportunity to coach some of them and they are, some of theirs are just pretty good, it looks good for our sport and that is really important because we need people doing our sport, it's a beautiful sport and everyone does it, just love it. It's like a mixture of park, racing, and just hardcore skiing. there have mobile skiing like doesn't matter if you do the worst or the best and whatever like as long as you're out there having a good time and uh, enjoying yourself then that's all it really comes down to. Good spot to stop Stan. Ball seven. Uh, 30 years ago riding up the chair just like that guy come down the head wall blasted it zipper line I said to myself South, I think I would like to do that. <laughs> Go too fast oh, the goggles. I didn't know that. Thanks, dude. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, I think that's the funnest. That's the funnest aspect of skiing, snowboarding, or anything, right? If you're not having fun, find something else to do. You know. <laughs> So you train hard, ski to the best of your ability, give it 110% and leave the cards on the table, right? I really don't know why we get along so well. Because we really shouldn't. Like, <laughs> even when you're on the same team with the guy, you're competing against him. He's the one, you know, you're battling with him, arguably more than the others, because you're training with him every day when you're not competing. I have some of my best friends on my team, so we usually just push each other to the next limit. Like, if I didn't have kids there training with me that were really good, like, I don't know if I'd be to where I am right now because we just push each other more and more. And, I don't know, it's sweet. We're competitive towards each other, but at the same time, we're like brothers. I get asked often who are my biggest inspiration in the sport, and I always answer that I always looked up to all my teammates that I grew up with and learned how to become a good skier and a good person in general. 
So I, I always looked up to my teammate and, and my friend more than I've looked up to uh, like the best. When I was young, the best bulk up skier or whatever. Most of the time, you, you, you're happy for your friends, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, if if one of my friends wins an event, I'm insanely happy for the guy, right? It's amazing. You get to you get to celebrate with them. You know, like let's say, like I really want to be Mick, but you know, and you know, I know that he'll be stoked for me if I if I beat him, if I ski well, and you know, vice versa, you know, every time he beats me, I'm happy for him if he skis well, you know, I mean, it's great, that's what we, that's what we, we all work together, we all want to ski our best, and when someone does execute and perform in that way, we're happy for them. You know, we, I think we can just see the bigger picture and understand that there's more to it than just beating a given person on a given day, and that uh, in the long run, we're all gonna be a lot happier and a lot better skiers if we, uh, if we support each other and we're happy for each other. I mean, you never see like other like football teams or anything training in the same field, but you can see people trying their first mogul skis and the top skiers in the world training the same course in the same day. And I don't think you can find that anywhere else. And that really shows how how mogul skiing is as a family all over the world. And it doesn't mean it doesn't matter if you don't know each other before. Just because you're mogul skiers, you have that connection, and that's really beautiful. That's a great thing about our sport is, you know, it's more laid back. It's more, you know, people do it because they love it and people push each other to, to get better. On the skiing side, a lot is the same. A lot, the culture uh, happily has, you know, it's changed a little bit, but, uh, you know, it's still freestyle skiing and the camaraderie we see, you know, the interaction, the way the kids interact together, even, even on the World Cup level where, you know, we see, uh, kids from different countries, you know, competing against each other, but at the end of the day, they'll sit down and take a beer together. They can, you know, they're, they're friends. Some people are like me, Alex, and like Simon Lemieux, and a lot of other skiers in, in the world, were like not stuck, but like double fun tennis, 1080, court 1080, it's a pretty big run, I think. But on some courts, like, that's not our limit. Half pipe, big air slopestyle whatever they are doing some doubles and I think in moguls it's it's possible I've done it many times if uh, we can push the FIS and uh, bring more freestyle in the sport I think that would be that would be something that can not uh, push the sports and be great for us I think the limitations that they have put on athletes and just the sport of mogul skiing in general, such as doubles and harder spins, I think it's the one way to kill mogul skiing. And I think um, if you don't take these restrictions off, then, then mogul skiing is just going to be on the decline. There's no reason to stifle an athlete's progression. With mogul skiing in this Olympics, Bilodeau just won with a perfect double full in court 10. And like we didn't see double full to court 10 in the last Olympics, at least on the podium. And now, next Olympics, at this rate, it's going to be the exact same run that wins because you can't, you can't go anywhere from here. Oh. You ski into a mogul jump at a World Cup speed, the jumps this big. It's obviously a pretty precise takeoff to land a double and there aren't a lot of athletes out there who can have that precise takeoff at that speed to do a double safely, but there are also athletes who can, which makes it a very interesting debate. Like I know people have done doubles right now on standard mogul jumps, but I think for safety they should make the jumps a bit bigger, like the landing is longer, the transition is a bit longer, this is like Right now, lots of people hurt themselves pretty bad just doing singles. So like, if you add doubles into that, it's gonna just be even worse. You just check a, a dual 
you know, in the World Cup, everyone lands like in the last moguls at the bottom air. Even at the top air, they land right in the bumps. So it, it's even more dangerous to do like a backfall when you land in the bumps than a double backflip landing on a pretty good solid landing. People want to push the limit and go to to bigger tricks. So I mean, and people are already doing doubles. So I think it's a matter of time because the pressure is, you know, gaining on the fists to say, look, I think the people are ready to do doubles. It's a matter of accepting it. You're training like most of your year, I'll say that, most of your life, just for like 30 seconds. Those 30 seconds, like once you have a good, like you have a clean run, it's just, it's like the best feeling when you finish it. the challenge it's so hard it's such a hard sports I've been doing it for 13 years I, I think and I'm still learning every day so you're never gonna be like a perfect mogul skiers like there's always gonna be flaws in your skiing and flaws in your jumping we're going three mogul this second and sometimes you have to make a quick decision when something is wrong and I like that feeling that you're owning like the spot you're the you're the one who, who can change things. You, you can decide to, to twist more, to flip more, to go faster. So much fun. Every day I'm out skiing moguls, I'm just having fun. Doesn't matter if I'm having a bad day on the course, I'm not skiing well, or like even if I have a big crash or something. A lot of the best memories I have in my life up to now are from mogul skiing, skiing with my family, skiing with my buddies all the time. I can't even imagine quitting, I'm like addicted to it. There's always something in that sport that makes you get out of your comfort zone. It's so technically difficult and beautiful. And when you get in the moguls, you don't want to go back.
Summer day, but I love the nighttime. I love the rain. 